So today we're gonna cover volume of prisms and volume of cylinders. Notice in the title here, it says that it's surface area of cylinders as well. It's in the notes, however, it won't be on the test. We're gonna quiz on surface area of cylinders after the test. First thing we're gonna do is define what volume is. And volume of a solid is gonna be the number of cubic units contained in its interior. Volume is always going to be the units cubed or cubic units. Now, this next thing that's listed here is Cavalieri's principle. I'm not gonna test you on Cavalieri's principle, but know that it exists in case you end up seeing it on a standardized test. It just states that if two solids have the same height and the same cross-sectional area at every level, then they're gonna have also the same volume. So again, the units here are gonna be cubic units, or what you could also put is units to the third power. So either write out the word cubic and then put whatever unit it is, whether it's inches or centimeters, and then put um, either to the third power or write the word cubic. So volume of a prism is gonna be based off of that base shape. So generically, it just says BH, where the capital B, be very careful with this, is gonna be the area of your base. So this capital B is gonna change depending on the type of prism. So when it's a square prism, then it would be the capital B would be the area of a square. If it's a triangular prism, then that capital B would be the formula for area of a triangle, and it would be one half base times height. So you're gonna need to know the basic area formulas, as well as what we did in 11.3. Let's say I give you um, a pentagonal prism, and you'll have to find the area of that pentagon base, and then multiply it by the height. Now, the figure over there on the right side of the slide, that is actually called an oblique prism, and it sort of looks like it's slanted. Now, always remember that whenever you're looking for an altitude or a height, it's always the perpendicular segment. So whenever your prism is gonna be slanted like this, a lot of times they're gonna indicate the height outside of the prism. So in this particular case, this is a picture of a rectangular prism. So in this particular example, the capital B here is going to be the area of a rectangle. So here, for the volume, what you would do is either think of the capital B as being just length times width, and then you're gonna multiply it by the height of the whole prism, so that's that H there. But if you thought of area of a rectangle as base times height, then what you would have is base times height, but then you'd have another H, which is actually just the height of the whole prism. So be very careful when you're doing these. Don't think of this capital B as just a base edge it's the area of the whole bottom, not just an, like a little side length. So be very careful. Next, we have the definition of a cylinder. And a cylinder, just like a prism, it's gonna have a base, but this time the base is gonna be a circle. When we have a right cylinder, the right angle is gonna be that altitude or that height. It's gonna be the segment that joins the centers of the circular bases. So what we would need to look for is this little right angle here. And this is gonna indicate that this segment right here is a height. And then we also would need to know the length of the radius in order to calculate <coughs> the area of that base. Because remember, a circle, the formula for area of a circle is gonna be pi r squared. 
So coming up in another two slides, we're gonna see the official formula for volume of a cylinder. Again, it's still capital B times height, but what's different now is this capital B is a circle. So it's gonna be pi r squared. And then we would times it by the height. So what's nice about the circle, it's a, a cylinder, it's a set formula, but we're gonna see it coming up. Okay, so this is the slide to calculate the surface area of a cylinder. And if you think about it, a cylinder is made up of a circle top and a circle bottom, but then the lateral area is really a rectangle. So I'm gonna show you how this formula is made up by using a piece of paper. So for example, if you have your cylinder and then if you were to unfold it, it really looks like a rectangle. And this length up here is really the circumference. And then the height here or this width is really just the height. So this is why the lateral or the rectangle part of it is two pi times radius times height because it's length times width. But again, just memorize this formula for surface area. Now what we're also gonna see is they're either gonna use the abbreviation TA for total area or SA for surface area. And then V as we've been seeing is what they're gonna use to represent volume. Everybody good? All right. Okay, so for volume of a cylinder, that again, formula, same as the prism, it's capital B times H, but this time, again, remember, this capital B is the area of the base, which is a circle, pi r squared. And it doesn't matter if it's a right cylinder or an oblique cylinder, it's still the same formula, pi r squared times the height. And again, the height will always be usually indicated as a perpendicular segment. So here's our first example. Since we're not gonna worry about um, doing any surface area questions, there isn't any surface area questions in the homework. Let's skip over parts B and C for now. So all we're gonna do is calculate the area of the base and the volume of this cylinder. So remember, the base shape when it's a cylinder is a circle. So we're gonna do pi times radius squared. Notice the radius in my figure here is the five, and the seven is the height of the cylinder. So I'm gonna do it first, leaving it in terms of pi, and then I'm gonna also use the pi button and round to the hundreds place. So leaving it in terms of pi, all I have to do is take the radius, square it, and then leave the pi symbol. So 25 pi centimeters squared. Remember, area is squared. When we do part D and we do the volume, those centimeters are gonna be cubed. Now, if the instructions say, using your calculator and round to the hundreds place, then I have to do 25 times pi on my calculator and I get 78.539, so 78.54. And again, you can write uh, square centimeters or just put centimeters to the second power. Now we'll go ahead and do the volume. Remember, that's gonna be capital B times the height. And we just calculated the base, we just did capital B, we got 25 pi, so that's what I can put here, and then I'll multiply it by the height of the cylinder. So I'm gonna do 25 pi times the height of the cylinder, which is seven. So seven times 25, 175 pi, and these will be centimeters cubed. If it says to use your calculator, and round to the hundreds place, 175 times pi is 549.78. And you could also, instead of putting centimeters to the third, 
write out cubic centimeters. So if it says leave it exact or in terms of pi, the answer is 175 pi. But if it says to round to the hundreds place, then it, they expect you to use your calculator and use your pi button. So here it wants us to find the volume of a square prism that has a base edge of five feet and a height of 12. So again, same formula, BH, but remember this time my capital B is gonna be the area of the square base. And then I'll times it by the height. Now, if it helps you to give yourself a visual, you could draw a picture let me just do a rough sketch here. Again, you don't have to draw anything if you don't want to. <clears throat> okay, so this is my square prism. This is my square base and it said that it has base edges of five feet. So each of these are five feet. And then it said the height of the entire prism was 12. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug it into my formula. So I'm gonna do area of the square, which is gonna be five times five. And then I'm gonna multiply it by how tall the prism is, the height, which is 12. So five times five, 25, and then times 12, and I get 300 feet cubed. Okay, so here they want us to find the volume of the puzzle piece. Now there's not a set formula for this, so what we have to do is split it up into two smaller prisms. It doesn't matter how you divide it up, that's totally up to you. You could divide it down this way, or I'm gonna divide it across this way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the volume of this piece of the puzzle first, and then I'm gonna find the volume of the bottom chunk here, and then add the two pieces together. So I'm gonna do the top piece. Notice the dimensions here. It's gonna be one by one by one. So this is also one unit here. So for the volume of that top piece, again, it's BH, but the base is a square. So my area of that base is one times one, and then the height is one. So the volume of that top puzzle piece is gonna be one unit cubed. Now I'm gonna do the bottom piece of that puzzle. And notice if you wanted to show, like here's your rectangle base. So again, I'm still doing the same thing, the BH, but now my base is three times one and then the height is over here, the two. So three times one times two. So the volume of the bigger piece of the puzzle is gonna be six units cubed. And now to find the whole puzzle piece, you just have to add one plus six. So the whole puzzle piece will be seven units cubed or cubed. Okay, so here again, a picture is not provided. So if you wanna give yourself a visual, you can. So it says we have a right cylinder. So it's not oblique, it's not leaning. So it's giving us the volume. So be able to, in addition, calculate a volume, be also able to be given the volume and work backwards and either find a radius or find a height. So remember the formula again for the cylinder, capital BH, but remember the B is pi R squared, it's a circle. So now I'm just gonna replace what they've given me. They also gave me the height, and the height of my cylinder is 18 inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill in. So instead of the V there, I'm gonna put 684 pi, and I'm gonna set that equal to pi, and I'm solving for the R. This is what I'm trying to find. And then I'm also gonna replace the height with 18. So now I need to begin to try to isolate the R. So you can do this in one step. I'm gonna do it in two, just to show you what we're doing here. 
I'm gonna first divide both sides by pi. You could divide both sides by 18 pi if you want, but let's get rid of the pi first. Notice when I divide both sides by pi, the pi's gone on both sides. So now I'm left with 684 is equal to 18r squared. Now I'm gonna divide both sides by 18. 684 divided by 18 is 38. And now that's equal to the radius squared. I don't want radius squared, I want just r. So I have to square root both sides. And the length of my radius is the square root of 38. Now if it said leave it exact, that's in simplest radical form. We can't break that down. Um, however, if it says round to the hundreds place, then you'll use your square root button and this will be 6.16 inches. So in addition to just straightforward calculating a volume, also be able to work backwards given the volume and find either the radius or the height. The next one wants us to find the volume of the oblique prism, same formula. Okay, actually, so same general formula, BH, but now my base shape, the capital B, notice the shape on the bottom here is a triangle. So the capital B is gonna be one half base times height because my base is a triangle. So what I'm gonna be doing here is one half base times height, but then I also have another H, which is the height of the whole prism. So let's go ahead and fill it in. So this could be my base of the triangle. This could be my height. It doesn't matter which one is base and height here. So let's just fill it in. So volume is equal to one half, nine times five, and then the height of the prism is eight. Now, if you want to go ahead and calculate the capital B first, you can. This gives me 45 over 2. You could also divide it, make it 22 and a half. But now I'm going to just multiply it by 8. And once I do that, I get 180 meters cubed. So when your figure or your solid is a prism, that base shape, that capital B, that part of the formula is gonna change depending on the shape of the base. And the way that you can tell which shape is the base is the polygon or the shape that you have two of. So I have two triangles. This is how I knew it was a triangular prism and not a rectangular. I can tell that this was the height because of the right angle here. Now we're gonna talk about similar solids. We already did similar figures back in prior chapters. And this was always the question when I asked you to calculate the area of a similar solid that people would get wrong because they forgot to square the scale factor. Now that we're talking volume, instead of squaring the scale factor, we're gonna cube it. So let's take a look. So when you have similar solids, remember they're the same shape, but one's small and one's large. So two solids of the same type, so two cylinders, two prisms, with equal ratios of corresponding linear measures, and these corresponding linear measures could be heights, they could be radius lengths, they could be sides of a rectangle or a square. You're gonna match them to get that corresponding linear measure. And when I talk about a linear measure, I'm talking inches, centimeters, feet, some type of linear unit. The ratio of the corresponding linear measures of two similar solids is called the scale factor. And if you remember back from the previous chapters, scale factor, corresponding ratio of side lengths is the same. And remember the ratio of the perimeters is the same as the scale factor. But remember the area ratio was that scale factor squared. Now for the volume, it's gonna be the scale factor cubed. So let's go ahead and try an example. Okay, so what we're gonna do here 
is we're gonna look for the corresponding linear unit measure and put it into a ratio. So notice I've got the side length of prism C. I've got it over here to be 12. And then I've got the side length of prism D, that is the corresponding side length. So what I can do is get the scale factor. My, the textbook here likes to use the variable K for scale factor. So you could say scale factor equals K. And then you're gonna take the two corresponding side lengths here, the 12 and the three, put them into a ratio, reduce it. Now, if it didn't specify, you could also do three over 12. So I'll go ahead and simplify this, four to one. So my K value is gonna be four. If I wanted you to calculate the new volume, I need to take that K and I need to cube it. So it would become four to the third, which would be 64. But what I like to do is when I go to look for these missing volumes, I like to set it up as a proportion. So what you could do here is you could do volume of prism C over volume of prism D, and that's gonna equal to the scale factor cubed. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take volume of C, which was the 1,536, I'm gonna put it over volume of D, which I don't know, and then I'm gonna take my corresponding side length ratio, the four to one, and I'm gonna cube it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do 15, 36 over X is equal to four to the third, which is 64, and one to the third, which is one. And now I'm gonna solve this as a proportion. So I'm gonna do 64 times X and 1,536 times one. Divide both sides by 64 and X is equal to 24. And remember, X was equal to the volume of prism D. So prism D, so the volume of D is gonna be 24 meters cubed.